Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are going to talk about Docker architecture. So many a times you would have seen people comparing a VM to a Docker container. But according to me and many other people, this is not, uh, I mean, this is not justifiable and this is a very questionable comparison because VM on one hand has a full blown operating system, whereas a container this is basically an isolated process isolated and this makes use of uh, primitive Linux kernel features like namespace and C groups so you cannot just compare a full-blown operating system to an isolated process right also if you see the startup times so for a VM this could go for from few seconds to maybe even minutes but a container it barely takes few milliseconds right so there is no i mean there is no substantial comparison between a vm and a container okay so moving on now let's see the high level architecture of docker so in the lower level lower layer you can see that we have linux kernel over here which provides features like namespaces c groups and union file system on top of this we have a container runtime so we'll talk about container runtime in detail later so i'm not discussing about this what container runtime is and on top of container runtime you can see we have the docker engine running which basically provides you a restful interface for clients to interact now let's talk about namespace so namespace in linux defines what a process can see and docker utilizes this to abstract resources like file system network and process tree so if you see uh, and in fact basically this is why when you start a container it starts with its own set of namespace so like you see we have a host system which has its own set of namespaces like a pid namespace mount namespace network namespace and when, when we start a container inside this host this container has his own uh, namespaces like PID mount that is why any primary process which is running inside a container always has a PID of one uh, and if you look at that process from the host point of view that process would have some random PID but from the container point of view that process will have the PID of one coming to C group C group basically define what a process can use and they help in limiting the resource utilization resources like CPU time, memory, and bandwidth. Another Linux primitive that is very important for the implementation of Docker is the union file system or union FS. So union FS basically enables Docker to efficiently manage the storage of all the image layers. So if you would have seen when you run any container and the image is not there, Docker basically goes to Docker hub and it downloads and when you, I mean, when you, if you see, it downloads the different layers. It downloads it in layers, right? So every layer is downloaded, and any layer which is already present on your system is not downloaded, right? So Union FS basically what it does is it pre presents multiple file system as a union mount, and their files and directories are basically referred to as branches, uh, which are overlaid to create a single file system. So basically, it takes different file system, right? and it creates a single point or single mount basically right which is visible to docker so this is what union file system does all right so i'll probably stop here and in the next video we'll continue with the union file system because it's very deep and i've just given you the introduction of union file system uh, there are different types of layers and how the layered uh, structure is basically maintained when you make modification to something in the container right so how does union file system handle that? Uh, we'll also cover the container runtimes like I told you and we'll talk a little about OCI or open, con open container initiative. Okay. So, okay. For this is it for this video, guys. I hope you like the video. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching.